Hi everyone, welcome to Gumpa TV. Hey guys, brought to you by Halloween Japan. We're back, this is episode 81. And we're very close because there is so much stuff. There's so much stuff on this table that yeah. to get on the shot, yeah, you have to go like this, which I kind of like. That. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> today, Ryan, what are you going to show? I am going to show my falcon. Um, I started to do a little bit of weathering, but it's a bit dark, so I'm going to try a technique of fixing that. Okay. I guess you could call it a mistake. And I'm also going to show how I did the panel lines and We'll go from there. Sounds good. What do you have, I'm sir? I'm going to show the uh, Resil Defensor. Oh, okay. And right now it's in its robot form. And I have not yet assembled it into its Wave Rider form with the oh. uh, extra piece they oh. give you. So I'm going to do that for the first time on camera. <sighs> Wish me luck. Yeah. And we have a whole bunch of gun Yeah. So I want to show this first. Okay. Now, uh, a couple of episodes ago, we were at Chizuoka. That we, we showed all that good stuff. And this stuff is it's finally hitting the shelves. Yeah, it's all here. It's all here. So. so Let's uh, go through it and have a look, and yes. then uh, we'll get on to the fun stuff. Yep. All right, so first off I want to show, we talked about the uh, Black oh, Lotus. Uh, yes. So if you remember from the hobby show, this is from the uh, Excel World anime, and uh, I was really curious as to what they're going to do with this kit. You can see that it's the Black Lotus character here. And uh, in Bandai fashion here, what they've done is they've given you, you know, your standard runners with all the armor parts that you need. Sorry, we'll just break these up here. You can see these, these large pointed pieces. You can also see they include a stand. This is the same stand you find in some of your Gundam kits. More of the black armor. And clear parts. Quite a few of them actually for a kit this size. As well as stickers. So, so uh, Excel World fans can now join the world of the Plamo and build uh, their own Black Lotus. And uh, this is also not a Gundam mm -hmm. kit, but it was also at the show looking really, really cool. It's actually the Wild Tiger yes. from the uh, Tiger and Bunny. Yeah, this actually yeah. got a lot of uh, interest. A lot of love. Yeah. This is uh, quite a hot anime right now. So we have a uh, Master Grade Figure Eyes kit that is not a uh, Kamen Rider. It's a Wild Tiger from the Tiger and Bunny anime, which is everywhere now in Japan. And uh, this is actually, uh, this box is a little bit bigger than the Kamen Rider uh, figureized boxes that they have and I think that's just because of uh, some of the accessories that this thing comes with you can see here uh, he's, he's quite a sizable figure but he also comes with uh, an enormous like boot and uh, we'll actually open this up and find out uh, what's inside here have you ever watched the show uh, I think I caught an episode once but I came in halfway through it so I wasn't sure the storyline but I mean we got some pretty big pieces here you have to admit even for a uh, figure eyes which explains the box size like this, as well as <laughs> this green, can't it's get away from cool. this green, clear parts, and the only off-color part on this whole kit is, that, is the face. Now, where's that thing I wanted to show? Well, there's runners upon runners. Oh, what's this? A stand. Very oh, nice. Stand. Nicely done, with, complete with screws, so it's going to be strong. Uh, effect parts right here and this is what I wanted everybody to see here's the here's the uh, water slide decals no oh, water, slide. water slide decals and you can see uh, it's got SoftBank here for those who don't know SoftBank is a, um, a carrier for cell phones like AT&T in the States so SoftBank is one of the major ones in Japan here and SoftBank is notable in Japan because they are the ones that carry the iPhones yeah the and the only company uh, actually uh, AU is now dominant oh, as well, but for a long time, SoftBank had the monopoly. And I think so, that's uh, why they're dominant. Like, that's why Docomo yeah. doesn't yeah. have them. They're getting their names splashed on kits as, yeah. as well. So uh, for those of you who uh, enjoy your water slide deco work, you're, you're in luck. You can yes. see they give you the options for eyes and things like that. So I'll put all this stuff away. Nice. And we'll move on to the next one. Now we get the Gundams. Let's start with the smaller ones, the HGs. It's the M1 Astray, so all you uh, Astray fans out there can rejoice. There's another Astray on the market. This is the 10th anniversary of Seed, of course. And they've redone the box art on the old HG kits with Seed, and they actually did it in this style. So the uh, M1 Astray fits right in there with like the likes of the Ale Strike and such. So open this baby up. Pretty standard, right? You've got the, uh, the Polycap uh, runner, and this is Basically the same polycap rubber that you'll find in almost any HG kit nowadays. Bandai's done a good job of designing their kits to fit work with the polycaps found on this runner. For example, uh, 
the uh, the delta that we we're going to show, sorry, the resolve that we're going to show in the show, uses the same polycap runner. And uh, you get this uh, nice red pieces molded pretty well here. Uh, looks like the the gate marks on some pieces are going to be pretty noticeable, but that's all right. And then look at extra marking stickers they're giving you, similar to the other HG remastered seed kits. It's pretty cool. So uh, I've done there. Seed fans rejoice. Now, does this mean that we have a master grade on the way? That's a good question because uh, we already have master grades of the red frame and the blue frame. It wouldn't be a stretch for uh, Bandai to make the uh, M1 into a uh, master grade. And Ryan, uh, the last one we want to show is the master grade blitz. Yay, master grades. I'm really excited. You know, uh, I always want to do every master grade I see. And yeah. uh, this one, I was like, oh, well, it looks cool, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't know about the blitz so much. It does, it's not as cool as the dual, in my opinion. But it wasn't until I was at the hobby show when I saw the, uh, the little display there with that weapon, that claw thing. Yeah, that is, that is cool. I remember yeah. when I was shooting video and that yeah. it just it looks at you. It looks really cool. So yeah. uh, I cannot not build this now. So cool. we're going we're gonna to have a little look at this. So we can look forward to... Well, yeah, in the like, near yeah. future, I'll have a completed bliss to show. Sweet. That's what I do. That's my, my job. Yes. I know. <laughs> All right, so Ryan. Yes, sir. I'm excited to see your falcon now. Yes, well, uh, let me get on it. All right. Well, I, I did a bit of weathering uh, with the kit. I used the panel line accent color from our good friends Tamiya. And um, I think maybe I was a little bit too heavy. Um, but I can't fix it, so it's not an, an issue. But uh, you can see here. I mean, what I was actually doing is, sorry. Um, I mean, I try to use this diagram as best I could. Now, I do realize they've probably coated it a few times with glosses and mats and put on the decals. But I was trying to um, get the dark areas through here and through here. And I guess I might have to use that uh, black tummy powder at some stage. But it is, it is a little bit... Um, What's the word? Muddy? Smudgy. Smudgy. Um, I started to clean it up here. Where it's, I think it's a bit uh, less smudgy. And I think once I put the decals on and some coats, it'll be okay. And, and I quite like you know, having the details of the pipes and the details in these uh, circle things over here and over here. But um, what I will demonstrate now is I'm, I'm going to try to use a little bit of the enamel paint. And just to um, clean up some of this muddiness and see if it actually helps. So basically this is the area here that I do like. So I'm gonna clean up this area over here a bit so it's uh, not as uh, muddy, I guess you would say. So I will start now. So I take a little bit of this enamel thinner and I just, uh, ooh, might be a little heavy. I just uh, run it over and it actually removes the, the excess you can see over there. So I just keep doing that. So I get the, the, the darkness in the in the grooves, but uh, the top is still relatively clean. Now we've showed this technique on Gumpati before. Yes. A little bit. A little bit. A long time ago. <laughs> it was like episode 15 or 16. <laughs> yeah, it's all a blur. It's all That's a blur. Not... So, what do you think, Sid? Is I think that... it's looking good, but I have a request. Yeah? So because of how the camera ang yeah. angle is. Do you want me to... No. Put it down. Put it if down. If you could do the part right here where your thumb is. Yeah. It's easy to see on the camera how oh, dark okay. it is. Don't move it. Okay. It's there easy to go. see how, how dark it is. Okay. If, if you can get in there and, and wipe this away, sure. I think it'll, it'll be easy to show okay. the, the difference. So, let's have a look. Yeah, you can see it coming off. Yeah. It might have been a little bit heavy with the enamel here, but that's okay. That's okay, because you, the enamel thermometer will just take uh, things off pretty easily, right? Yeah. If you go heavy... You can see how much actually paint was on yeah. there. So yeah, you can see if you can kind of take that out. Mm -hmm. Keep your grooves nice and dark. And it's, yeah, I like that. It's, it's been reduced, which is good. Yeah, that's a much better effect. Yeah. So um, what else I will show today is 
I might just do a, like a little panel line. You guys mm -hmm. can see what I did initially. And then I had to go back and clean it up. Okay. But this will be a good demonstration. Where are you going to do it? I'm probably just, uh, how's that for you around here? Yeah, it looks good. Get in on there, okay? if, I think if you put it here, we'll get the capillary okay, action down sure. here. So, okay, let's have a look. Pressure. Come on, baby. No. She ain't listening to me today. Let me try that again. There it goes. There we go. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, that's what I want. Now you could, this is uh, what you can do with the, the panel lines and Gundams too. It's really yeah, this, actually this thinner is really cool. I mean, I think these panel lines are probably a little bit too dark. Um, well, I'll just quickly demonstrate. So what I'd normally do is I'd uh, take another earbud. My wife is probably wondering where all the earbuds went. <laughs> is that what they call them in Africa? Earbuds? Oh, what do you guys call them? Q-tips. <laughs> well, that's a brand name. <laughs> like Kleenex. Do you call it tissue or do you call it Kleenex? Oh, tissue or Kleenex. So normally I just come We're not going to get sued for using Q-tip and Kleenex on mm, an episode, are we? No. So normally I just come through. Just I just want a little bit of the... This is more for demonstration purposes, yep. but I think you get the idea. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll just go over it a little yeah. bit. You let it dry just a little bit so the stuff mm. inside the crevice will stay, and then you can go yeah. once again more with your enamel thinner and mm. really clean it up. But yeah, I mean, that's just what I want, just a darkening mm. of those areas. So, um, yeah, initially I, I did go a bit dark, but, um, you know, once I've removed the enamel, uh, the, the paint a bit, mm -hmm. It actually comes up very nice. And once I've put on a flat coat and a gloss coat and the decals, hopefully it'll start to look more like this uh, over here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure this was probably done by a super pro. Yeah. But I must say, this kit has been like, it's given me about five or six months of pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even though I'm a newbie, I mean, this has just been a great experience and, and really entertaining. And I, I want to finish this up soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think next episode i should have hopefully the bottom and the top done all right and then we can look at uh, some of the decals i'm looking forward to that part that's cool well said i guess we should um get on to right. some gundam sounds good so last week we showed the resil type c defensor b unit and i promised that we'd show it on the show so here it is one week later and uh you can see for an hg kit it's it's quite sizable it's really big and uh it's got all, it's basically the resil, but it has this giant backpack. And I'm gonna spin this guy around so you can just see how, how it goes on here, how this giant backpack goes on. Now it's very, fairly sturdy, but uh, the joints on the hips can have a little issue if you start pivoting these too far back. With, if the weight gets unbalanced, then it's, it's gonna have a problem. But this is meant to be on a stand. Like when you look at a kit like this, it's meant to be on a stand. So what we're actually gonna do today uh, on the episode is a little bit of a debut so to speak because I haven't even done it myself is we're going to use this uh, supplied little rig here this is like three pieces in a poly cap you put this together and this is the key piece for changing the the resil into its wave rider form all right so I've got everything I need I got my cutters here and the, the runners that I'm going to use and I've even got the uh, manual laid out and this section of the manual that deals with the transformation is all in color so hopefully that'll help me <laughs> so the first thing you have to do with your uh, Resil Defensor unit is after you put it all together like this, well, you got to take it apart. So that's, that's what I got to do. And it's, it's kind of a sad occasion for me, but uh, more or less, I'm just pulling these sections off. And they go on really, really easily. You don't have to worry about snapping anything when you, when you take them off here. And when uh, you're finished, you can see the, the Resil. He's kind of naked. And then you have this... Unit here, so it's not as sexy as an anime figure when he's naked. That's true. I guess it all depends on what floats your boat. So I'll pop off these side skirts, very sizable side skirts. Oop. And uh, are you thinking about anime figures again when I said skirt? <laughs> yeah, no, I just said such side skirt. I'm like, dude. And this piece skirt. actually comes off. And inside here, there's actually two polycaps, which is why it's easy able to come on and off like this. So with this off. I take this this little unit here and I uh, actually join these up like that. You can see the line is really smooth there, like it was meant to be. And then the shield, well, here's the shield while well, you drop this in 
from the top like that. So here's the basis of my of my wave rider mode here. And uh, one, I'm going to pull the legs off. I'm going to separate the torso like this. Pull out this middle piece, and then swing this baby around. Plug it in here, like this. All right, looking good so far. It actually slides in there really, really nicely. You can see the, the groove in the shield that accommodates it. Now with the legs, it's just a matter of folding these guys over, like so, and bringing these feet down like this. And then you start using these extra parts. So I'm gonna find K12 here, which is this guy. Quickly cut this off. I didn't cut them off previously because I didn't want to get confused. So it might take a little extra time this time around, but that's okay. And uh, there's this little circle. I don't know if you guys can see, but on the underside of it is a little peg. Mm -hmm. And this actually will go into the ankle joint. So it actually clips on this way somehow. I didn't realize, but this is a full transformation. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually, there is only a couple extra parts needed right which is pretty cool uh because it's an, an, a high grade master grade kits now you expect that it's all able to transform in one go without any part swapping and then in some cases that actually works against it because uh it's always not not always sturdy when mm. you start swapping parts around but when you are able to part swap like you can on this resil it, it, it means that you're probably going to get a pretty sturdy uh unit when you're finished you don't have to worry about uh, so many things coming off here so here's uh looking at the back here pulling off this for now and i need a piece k9 like i said i have not done this before so i had, it's possible believe it or not ryan that i could make a mistake you're like a virgin <laughs> where'd that come from it's the first time. <laughs> Stop right there. I said uh, you cannot make mistakes. And I'm on camera. Okay, so you see this little hollow here and then a peg? Well, there's a peg here and this ball, this uh, ball. So putting that in like this, it's actually quite secure. And then you can put on the, uh, the side skirts, Ryan. The side skirts. Yes, skirts. Hey, <laughs> hey. Plug this baby. Where are these things? They're so big. Actually, I think last week they did that girl wing. You know the figure. Oh yeah, yeah the wing girl. Yeah. The wing girl, and uh, she was cute. Yeah, that's a really popular yeah. uh, toy. Eh? Actually, I mean, if anyone hasn't watched it, but yeah, go to uh, Toy Tengoku. See the girl wing. Very nice. Okay, I'm just uh, trying to make sure I get off. Get this correct here. Oh, so good. This and this, these two protrusions. Well, you have this hollow and this circle. So drop these on here. See, there's there's one side. Huh? Yeah, it's sweet. Pretty easy, actually. Yeah. So I'll put this here, and I'll quickly repeat the process again the second time for the other side. Uh, actually, there were uh, someone actually asked about our shirts. Yes, you can see I'm wearing the yes. HLJ shirt right now. Sadly, um, we don't have any for sale at the moment, but when they do become available, uh, mm -hmm. we will let everyone know. There's actually one, uh, one question I wanted to ask people. is like, uh, we, we have these HLJ shirts, they say Havilink Japan, mm -hmm. but uh, would there be any interest from people if we were to come up with a Gundam TV shirt? Well, I did talk to someone at work about it, mm -hmm. and uh, the problem is the copyright issues. Uh, we always... might be able to do Gunpla. But uh, we'd actually need to look into it because, you know, it's Bandai's territory. Ah, that's right. Yeah, so, but, uh, yeah, please give us your feedback. It would be sweet. I mean, I'd really love, like, a awesome shirt with, like, a big Gundam head and Gunpla TV on it or something. That'd yeah, that'd be, be cool. That'd be sweet. Well, the Gundam, the Gundam head would def probably definitely be <laughs> a, some kind of copyright issue. But I didn't mean, some place build a copy of China oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean if China can do it should be all right right should, can get should be okay yeah? yeah it should be okay China never does anything untoward 
So while we were discussing China and their piracy <laughs> problems, I uh, finished with the other side of the the rebel here. So uh, I've got now I've got these like three stages here, but there's still more to do. I need to extend these these guns here, and these are actually quite cool. These arms. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. It, it, you can ha when you have it on the back of your rezzle, it allows you to flip these guns over or have them this way. Oh, or even very tuck nice. them down. So it actually helps with the balance of the kit when you're trying to pose it. I'm gonna take my last extra piece like this, like that, so I don't need this runner anymore. And uh, I almost hit my falcon. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Falcon is precious to me. Totally understandable, Ryan. I know you do, Sid. You <laughs> treat it with utmost respect. <laughs> <laughs> so, pull off this backpack piece, which goes in the rezzle, and uh, I should be replacing it with, with this piece, which goes this way. There's a little groove here that's going to fit right in there, like this. And then I drop these down into these grooves. And they actually almost snap right in there. They lay in there pretty easy. Yeah? Yeah, very nice. Like this. So now it's just a matter of putting all my pieces together. I'm always upside down here. So last final step. We got these protrusions here. Go in, there's a polycap and a female connector. Oh my goodness, let's go. Hmm, looking good. Yeah. And then the, dropping the top piece on. Wow, this thing's monstrously large. Oh, yeah. And there it is. This wow. should be the, the Wave Rider form. Very nice, Sid. Yeah, I'm digging it, actually. It's cool. So, And the cool part of it is you can see that there's one little poly cap in there. If you have your action base, you plug it in, and then this guy's he's good. And we'll uh, get some nice photos and put them on our blog. So, yeah, so if you want sure to see close-ups, the, the blog site, and we'll have all the, the close-ups. Okay, right. So uh, I yes, see you questions. Piece of paper there, we're doing we the question questions. segment of our show. Awesome show, guys. Hey, Sid. Why don't you show all your custom Gundams? I'm sure they would take up a whole episode. And also, do you think Bandai would ever release an MG from the Gundam X series? That's from Desert uh, Murasame. Murasame. Uh, showing all my kits on the show. I think we'll take more than one show. We'll take like 10. We would not take 10. Um, you have a lot of kids. I have a lot of kids. He has a lot of but kids. I also you have, have no idea. I also have my own, my own site slash blog. Did I put them on there? So well, you might as well pump your blog. Yeah, I have What's the a, name? Gai, Gaijingunpla.com. Gaijing-gunpla.com. Gaijin yeah, remember the hyphen. Yeah, otherwise, you won't find it. But yeah, yeah uh, I put all my custom stuff on there. And uh, I kind of keep them separate because I don't want to just rehash stuff. Like, there's a lot of crossover, of course. A lot of uh, work in progress for like these will be on my site and then when we film it we don't have to show the entire thing. But that episode where you said like your top five kits, I mean you brought a lot of your kits in. Oh those are all my kits. Yeah so yeah. I mean I think it's a nice idea. I mean maybe do a special show yeah. one day. I will consider yeah. it but uh, this show is to promote uh, you know I think the newer stuff. And well all the I mean it's also to promote I mean, your interest in that thing. Yeah. But anyway, all right. let's go on to Liam the Great. Uh, great to see your falcon coming along, Ryan. Well, thank you. Are you going to add some brown or burnt sienna brush, drush? Brushing brush. for burn marks or rust? I, I mean, the uh, diagram actually does have some burn marks and yeah. streep marks. And scorches. Scorches. And uh, that may, if I'm feeling brave, I will try. Yeah. Okay, next is a delicious episode and a great way to start my Tuesday. The M Falcon is coming along splendidly like a fine cuisine. Thanks. <laughs> wow, I'm, it's the first yeah. time I've ever heard uh, anybody yeah, thank you. refer Give to me. your uh, model as Give a fine props. cuisine. Do you Depends. know this guy used to be a chef? Yeah, you, yeah, you, in the day. You hit the right note right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, culinary skills uh, shines through. Yes. <laughs> Okay, and uh, he continues, I have the MG MK2 HD edition, yeah. and some of the water transfer decals are a pain to keep on the kit. One wrong rub and it peels off and, I need, and need to be applied again, even though it's fully dried after 40 to 60 minutes. Also, the beam saber pegs seem to have been stretched due to the pegs on the backpack mm -hmm. and are now a bit loose when placed in the hand. How can these be remedied? That's from Brian, Brian Stern 1. Uh, first on the decals, you can use, of course, the mark setter. Mark softer, those kind of things. Uh, 
Also, 40 to 60 minutes doesn't necessarily mean that deco is completely adhered to the plastic. Yeah. I mean, did you watch my pink plane? Yeah. It takes a long time. It takes a long time. A lot of the smaller <laughs> ones, though, like, uh, they're easy to move just because they're so small. Like, mm -hmm. the surface area, the friction they have is less than the, the big decals you put on Does the plane. spraying them? Yeah, that's yeah. What's, what you should do is you should put them on, and you should, once you get them in the right spot, and you, you, they're where you think you, they are, what I do is uh, I leave them for, you know, 30 minutes or more make sure, after taking away all the excess water and I'll go af over that with a little bit with uh, Mark Softer, mm. Mark Setter, and then I'll just leave it. And then a day later, 24 or 48 hours later, then I'll, I'll spray with the top coat. What's it, when I was doing my uh, Falcon, no, not mm -hmm. my Falcon, the F-22, mm -hmm. I but think I Sid think. said the same thing to me and it works. Yeah. So just, I would just wait. listen to <laughs> Sid. <laughs> Deckles is more... <laughs> more of a waiting game than mo the actual kit building. Yeah. Like when you build something like this, of course, you gotta use the cement and you gotta wait and then you can do the next part and you gotta wait. But decals is just like that. Like you need to, you need to apply the decal and then wait. Well, the cement, I think is much quicker than the decal. Yeah, well, it will dry faster than the decal, that's for sure. Now this is from Flows30. Now he says it's a question for Ryan, but I think Sid can answer this question after me because I think it applies to buy both of us. Okay. So. Question for Ryan, you're obsessed with big model kits and I'm sure you'll take another one in the future. Where did you put it all? Did you display it in a showcase or just arrange them on a table? Because I, I heard a typical house apartment in Japan is rather small and you're correct. I have a very small apartment. It's a knee LDK, so it's two bedrooms and a lounge kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, I put them on a table. But this falcon, I don't know where I'm going to put it because yeah. I do not have space. I'm hoping to hang it from yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, get some string and hang it from the ceiling. Yeah, that's the best part. Yeah, it's. I mean, I I don't have a display case. I just don't mm -hmm. have the money at the moment or the space for it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I run out of space. Normally, I have to pack things away, or else I bring things to work and put them on my desk. Yeah, have some on my desk. <laughs> what I do you actually, do, sir? I'm pretty lucky because I live in a in a house, and it's actually a two-story house. I have three bedrooms. I have oh, the the okay. washitsu, the uh, tatami room. So I, I have, although I have a bigger house, heaps of space. It's still filled with crap. I have one <laughs> room that it holds all my computer junk, and the, my Gundam supplies and everything. And what I do is I basically just put them right back into the box and put it in a stack up yes, against so, the wall. Yeah. So I've got stacks of Gundam boxes against Actually, one wall in my house. I'll take a photo of my desk at home with my stuff and okay. put it on our Facebook or our blog. So yeah, okay. you'll get look. You're gonna, you want to do something like that? Yeah, let me clean up a little bit. First. Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually have that much because I build these kits. It takes so long. I think I only have ah, five things. That's but true. Yeah. Okay, next is uh, SteveTheFish.net. Ryan, the paint goes on smoother when you let them sit in a bowl of warm water for a few minutes before applying. Well, thank you very much that's for that the tip. First time I've ever heard that. Yeah, I haven't tried it, but it sounds like sound advice. Next. Also, buy yourself a good spray mask at Kind's Home. You'll need it to protect your lungs. Take care of yourself. You're working with lack as well. Steve, obviously you live in Japan. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we have a Kind's Home and I do often buy a lot of my supplies from Kind's Home. Mm -hmm. You're going to go down there and buy masks? I, I bought masks from Kind's Home, but not the fancy ones, just the basic ones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I got a cold mask. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no. It's It's... it's it's a bit more professional than oh, okay. that. Right. Uh, but you're right. I, I should really wear a mask. I know. We keep saying that. We, you know, use proper equipment, work in a well-ventilated well area. We, there's all these rules. Wear gloves. You tend to skip that when you're out there with a spray can in the in the back of some building. Right? And also, you know, we want good sound. And <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ryan with the mask on. Yeah, sound like Darth Vader. Okay, um, next is Don Turkey. Hey, Sid mm -hmm. and Ryan. Great to see another episode of Gunpla TV. I'd like to comment first on Ryan's skill on spray painting. Good job, Ryan. That was awesome. Thank you very much. I can see that you're enhancing your skills on model kit building and you're giving a great inspiration. I'd like to see more. Well, thank you very much. Actually, thank you very much. It's always appreciated. <laughs> when uh, Ryan first came on the show, we brought him in as a little uh, noob, newbie TV kind of thing. And uh, the idea that he doesn't have any idea what he's doing when he's building these kits. And he's, he didn't, and he does, you know, he's progressing, you know? Well, it's not, like, this is something, actually, it's a good point that I want to bring. Like, sometimes I say oh, I'm not a pro builder, but oh, I, how do you get a job as a pro builder? Like, I, I think it's a hobby. Like, yeah. you just get better at it. Maybe. Of course, it's all stars. Yeah. I think it, you can equate it almost to sports. Yeah. The amount of people that play sports for fun is enormous. The amount of people who are actually good enough that they can become a professional is very small. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you, you you need to be you need to practice a lot. You need to be dedicated, and you need to be good. Right. 
So and practice makes perfect. Of those three things. Yeah. Practice makes perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. Like <laughs> if you keep making the same mistake over and over and over and over and over again, you're never going to get better. Yeah. You need to like you know look online, there's tutorials, and uh, read how other people go about doing something and copy that and copy that until you can get the same effect. Well, and I feel like I'm reaching the stage where. Like maybe I'll start looking online for tutorials mm -hmm. and stuff. I, There's lots of them. Yeah, I, but I, I've enjoyed it. Like this is actually a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're enjoying what you're doing. Um, there is a second part of the question. Sid, yep. have you tried building master grades from the early 2000s? I want to know what's your favorite old MG? I think the MG GPO3 is great old school MG. Uh, this is actually a really good question. I went back and I looked. And uh, the oldest kit that I've built is yeah. the Master Grade Arc 72 version K, and that's actually 2002. Okay. So it doesn't fall into the category that he's mentioning. And I looked at the uh, list of kits that are from pre-2000, and there's quite a bit of model kits in there. Then there's quite a bit of models that have not been redone as 2.0s, so to speak. So if there's there's certain kits in there that people are suits that people want to build, they're going to be building pre-2000 kits. And then I looked in a you know, that's quite a large selection, so I kind of want to ask this guy and everybody else, like, what is a good pre-2000 kit? You know, let me know what the, what's a really good one, and yeah. we'll, we'll show them on the show here. Yeah, yeah. actually, please do. Yeah. Uh, I have zero idea. Well, there's, so, there's, yeah. there's so many people coming to this hobby now, and uh, they're new to the hobby, and they only know, you know, the, the mass rates I've released in the last five years, you know, so, but there's, there's so many from before. Actually, how long has Gunplug been going? 30 years, dude. Wow. Our 30th anniversary, like, uh, So you mean there's kits year. from the, like, 80s? Not mass rate kits, but there's, like, you know, just a, a basic standalone, no articulation, slap two shells, three right, other okay. type kits from, like, yeah, early 80s. Cool. You can see that evolution going. And when they brought in CAD, it went like that. <laughs> and that's why we're getting the, uh, the, the master rate and the HD kits we are now. Yeah, like the technical difficulty is, yeah. is intense. Mm -hmm. Okay, now these are just a few questions from our blog. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just kind of our blog. We actually do post more pictures there. Yeah. So it's more than just a video. And you, it links to the YouTube video anyway. So some, yeah. before we had a different format, I think, mm. for the video. So people would just go YouTube. But we actually have the YouTube video embedded in our blog post. So you can just uh, go there and you'll see the pictures at the same time. Yeah, a lot of cool pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay, so firstly, is uh, about a month ago, sorry, about a month I asked about the following white base model, which you, Sid, mm -hmm. said you will talk about. I wanted to know how much painting and gluing did it actually require, as I'm more secure with my Snuffit molded in color stuff. Yes. Thanks. Is this, uh, this is, uh, Livio? Is Livio? 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 Uh, Livio? Uh, yeah, he did mention that, and it was a good idea, and I said I would put it in the pile, and uh, we'll show it. In the future, and that was just before Shizuoka and everything, everything else blew up. So my apologies for the delay, but uh, we have these kits here in stock again. This oh, is the white base. This is the one he's talking about. That is funky. Yeah, that's funky. yeah, okay. that's like retro. Yeah, yeah, okay. old school. I am. What's the scale on these things again? One seven, one seventeen hundred. <laughs> There's a whole series of these these uh, kits that they actually put out, and uh, we'll show a clip of that. But actually, let's have a look. He wanted to see. Now, of course, we're not building on this show. To show you what you can expect to find in here. And you can see uh, they still have a lot of these connectors here. So in a lot of cases, it will be snap fit. There's the big wings on the back here. I mean, it, on the surface, it doesn't look terribly different from what we come to expect mm. from Gundam kits, right? But here's the, the manual. And I'm wondering if they actually say what it is you can do. Now this is kind of old school. You can see the painting guy is just this block of text in the bottom. If you can't read Japanese, well, you might be in trouble because there's no actual color to it. But uh, just looking at the, uh, the manual here, you can see how, uh, we're gonna show some shots of the manual just to show everybody. You can see how in some cases there's just pegs. These just slide on these pegs. But in other cases, yeah, it looks like you are going to indeed be using some glue, right? So, if you have any kind of uh, just basic uh, experience with glue, then you, you, can, you can do this. You know, this is not a problem because it's still all molded in color. So uh, not like you don't have to worry about gluing every seam line and then sanding it down and painting it. If you use the cement correctly, then uh, you'll be able to build this without worrying about mm. uh, you know, getting in there and, and cleaning up all that cement afterwards and stuff like that. 
It looks so, pretty straightforward. So uh, there's a, these actually, they're not released that often. Bandai restocks them, of course, not as regularly as their snap fit kits because they're just not as popular. But I'm sure there's people out there that are watching this show that have built, built something like this. So if you built one of these, this kind of series of kits, uh, write, it, write in, let us know. Like, yeah, uh, we'll post know. on, uh, on Hobbyland TV. Yeah. You can see, uh, of course, in the box here, on the side of the box here, it does have color even though, uh, I'll show this shot too, you can see this blue in here. Well, if you look at this, uh, these parts here. So you will need to paint. There's no blue. Yeah. So it, they give you the red and they give you the frame and then they give you the white armor. So, but if you want to get this, this kind of look, be prepared to paint. And mask. <laughs> and mask, but we showed you how to do that on the yeah. show. But I don't think it's anything to be intimidated by. No, no. Considering you know, just the age of the. And it looks very nice. Like I mean, I think that would be a super, yeah, super kit to build actually. Yeah, it looks like it would be a, it would be a, a lot of fun. Okay. You know, maybe Ryan, as a newbie, should <laughs> should tackle something like this instead of jumping into this. But, uh, That's not my style. Yeah, there's no going back now. Ryan. No. Once you build a falcon. That's <laughs> right. Okay, so next one is show all Gundam collection you have. Show all the Gundam collection I have. We talked about that, right? <laughs> yeah. It's all in stacks in the wall in my house. Yeah. I wouldn't be adverse to taking a couple pictures of video. Yeah, yeah, it up should, there, but yeah, there's a lot of extra crap I gotta clean out there first. Next, is DJ Zali. Yeah. And hey Ryan, I have got a question too, for you too. If you got a chance to paint other color on the Falcon, what color would you paint it? That's very nice question. That's a very difficult question. The, the Falcon as such has been embedded in our minds for, t what is it, 20 years? Actually. years now looking like actually, this. Actually. If you I, were to paint I, it a different I, color, I, would, would it work? You know what? A, like, desert digital camo. Desert digital camo? I'm liking where you're going with that. Or like in Battlefield 3, like some of your de desert uh, uniforms yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, the camo would kind of work. You can get like a sand camo and land yeah. on Tatooine diorama, maybe. That'd be cool. And you? I would paint it. I would paint it black, or as dark <laughs> as I could. <laughs> and then, because I'm crazy, and if I'm desecrating the Falcon, I might as well go hard. I would do flame job <laughs> up here and down. That's what I would do. So it would be the red, and then the orange, and then the yellow. I, and maybe some sparks flying. You know, on. I might do it white. But I'm crazy that way. I'm actually liking that kit, like the the yeah. red and the yellow and the okay, blues so and the white. Okay, so we put some like blue down this yeah, side. Yeah, I mean, like it this. could, could maybe be some cool. Some red here, or sorry, blue here with some yellow. Yeah, and we can add some red down here. But actually, I think camo, like a cool desert camo. I think you can't escape camo nowadays. Like it's it's the, yeah. it's the cool thing. Like yeah, yeah you some people who are submitting yeah. Gundams to. Uh, a contest that you see online. They yeah, do some of the digital, the digital camo. camo. Yeah, it looks freaking awesome. Even if it's like these bright colors, which are totally un not fit for purpose. Like you're gonna see this thing. It's giant. It's blue and white and gray and electric. Maybe blue. one day we'll do but a just digital camo episode. Digital camo. <laughs> we did a little bit of digital camo with the uh, full armor. I put it oh, painted yeah, that that's true. That was a long time ago. But yeah, digital camo seems to be the end thing. So I think it would work on the Vulcan. So uh, that's all the questions. Just yeah, come have a look at our blog. We're also yep. on Facebook and we do yep. Twitter. Yeah. So uh, all about social media stuff. So yeah, and yep. um, you get a lot of extra stuff on our blog. Yeah, that's so what we're trying to do. We're blog. trying to put all the pictures on there because yeah. we can just control how it's displayed. Actually, and there's a post by a friend of ours called Mario. It's the M51 remote control tank. Yeah. And he did a really comprehensive, great tutorial. Yeah. I would really come check that, that out. Awesome. Yeah. That's really good. Really great. Uh, so this is marks the end of June. Yes. In July we're going to see new Gundam, especially the Real Grey Justice. So you can look forward to that in the next few weeks. I think it's supposed to be here on the 16th or something. And it also explains why we have haircuts, because it's getting hot in Japan. Yeah. It's uh, yesterday we had our uh, solstice. It was also the uh, the first day over 30 degrees, and last year, like I don't know if people know about the weather in Japan. Uh, the, the summer gets ridiculously hot and humid, like and humid. 95 humid. degrees or percentage of humidity. But uh, I think last year we we had a record of 80 some odd days over 30 degrees with like 100% humidity. With like I think a string of them, almost half of them being in a row. Like, uh, it was insane. And so we also had 
Uh, power cuts. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that was that was fun. So I look forward to more sweaty guys with haircuts <laughs> showing some yeah. plastic in the next couple months <laughs> back on the TV. Cool. All right, we'll see you later. See ya.